tonight on HIP on the Spot News. We got more news about the F4 Phantom. Hitler CEO gave a lengthy interview. Jester 2.0 could have been a girl. Really? And a naval version of the Phantom will be developed in the future. This and more on How I Play. This video is sponsored by Fox3 Managed Solutions. Hello Virtual Pilots, I'm Andre Celesti and tonight we are going to talk about the latest news in DCS world. And here we go again. As we hinted in our last video, we kind of expected Hitblur to pop up with new content and info on the F4. And last Friday, they released a great video showcasing yet again the F4 E Phantom 2 in a wild weasel gameplay trailer, first in, last out. The video is full with dramatic scenes and a must-watch for the Phantom fans out there. A big shout-out to Adrian Carpazzo, the master behind the trailer. I linked it in the video description so you don't miss it. And we can say yet again, the hype is real. And not only that, but I am happy to see we got the manual for the Phantom. Of course, still work in progress as tradition, with new updates slated later as certain systems become operational. Nice. And all of this takes us to the main subject of today's video, as Cobra, the founder and CEO of Hitblur Simulations, has been on the Air Combat Sim podcast and provided some juicy info. So, of course, we took all the important info discussed there and dissected the entire 60 minutes for those of you who don't have the time to listen to the entire show. But I highly recommend you do that if you can. Link is in the video description. So now, sit back, subscribe, relax, and enjoy the F4E Phantom info grab. And let's see what was mentioned. The time invested in the F4 until so far is about two and a half to three years, with small interruptions due to world events. If you ask me, that's quite a process. As we know from before, they decided to create certain systems for the F4 and then have the F14 as a beneficiary of all the work as well. Compared to the F14 experience, the F4 is quite difficult and it has quite some hardships of using the radar and interpreting the smudges. So the F4 being quite a handful experience, we should expect a large gap to be formed between experienced operators and non-skilled ones. Basically, the F4 will transport us back in time to the end of a pure analog era, and we should expect a very visceral experience, as we have seen in the videos, with everything being jittery and vibrating around us. Cobra even mentioned that if you are prone to motion sickness in VR, he wouldn't recommend you fly in the viso seat of the F4, because it's going to be a vomit comet at that point, as you don't see much up front and the world is spinning around you and you got very little reference of the world outside of the cockpit. The conversation then moved to Jester AI. Jester has been basically rebuilt and they went a long way developing him, or better said redeveloping. And of course, making him more scriptable so people can tweak their own experience with cool functionality. Overall, they are aiming at the same experience as the F-14 for Jester, but he is now more future-proof. The Jester menu got a revamp as well, taking less space on the screen and also includes mouse interactions so we can click it now. Flying the F4 is a great experience. For anyone used to the F14 will be quite similar, but maybe a bit more easier because of the slated wing E. Keeping in mind, it's still an old school third gen power brick, so trouble is expected. Cobra said it's probably a bit more trickier jet to employ in a combat situation. You don't feel the envelope as well as you do in the F-14 and the use of early weaponry in combination with a full analog feel, it will be tricky to employ its capabilities when you first experience this jet. And speaking of weapons, we should expect that the strikes and walleye will be available at launch plus plenty of more LGBs and mavericks and all types of rocket pods. 
They also mentioned the RWR technology they are working on. It will make its way in DCS and be able to be implemented in future modules. And the radar functionality will provide a great feeling as it has seen some great work for the F4. We can expect even certain sounds that the radar makes, certain aspects of its movement while rotating in the jet, as they try to create something a bit more comprehensive and basically setting a new standard in regards of the RWR and radar in the CS world. As a side note, they did mention the tarp spot for the F-14 and what's happening with it. As we know, we got it for the time being as a model on the jet, eye candy. But they are working on the gameplay layer right now and they want to do something like you can make a photo or get either a circle marking on the intel objects or a marked list. Something interesting in regards of gameplay, but at this time they are still figuring out this functionality. So coming back to the F4, we all know that they will release the F4E variant very soon. But there is a roadmap for other versions, like the Naval Phantom, but as a separate module, as it is a very different aircraft, especially inside. So it will happen, even though they haven't chosen the exact version, but the J and S are the leading candidates because of their similarities to the E. On the road to deliver more interactivity with their modules for all of us to experience, they did spend a lot of time preparing interactive checklists where you can cross things out. It was mentioned that this won't be available at launch, but it will come quickly during early access. Then you got the clickable manual that you can use in-game with no need to alt tap from the sim or print things. Plus the use of a specialized hotkey to select certain buttons in the cockpit and pop up the manual at the exact page where the functionality of that system is being presented. According to Cobra, this hasn't been easy to implement. I definitely tip my hat to Hitler for doing something like this. Because I personally know why. I do spend a lot of time in tutorial missions and there are lessons that really need some love. Not all, but some require more time and help to dust off the old Presta spacebar or even the much needed voiceovers. Respectful shout out to the team at Ergis. If you need any help with the F1, let us know. The F4 will feature a campaign. Even if it's not available on launch, they will have a slew of single missions, a full suite of training missions at the beginning for the basic systems and weapons. But wait, there is more. They also have some tech ideas to push things a bit further with the narrative side of missions. Working with Baltic Dragon, this only makes me more excited of the possibilities. Another big feature for the F4 is the simulated crew chief. At a base level, you will interact with him for ground power and stuff, but you won't use the radio menu for it. Then you got more functionality based on what real crews will do, like control checks, moving your surfaces and the crew chiefs will sound off, immersion level 1000, nice. So most of you already know that our new sponsor is Pimax. With their flagship product, the Pimax Crystal VR headset, they made a good impression at this year's CES in Las Vegas. Especially with their foveated rendering technique, which uses an eye tracker integrated with a virtual reality headset to reduce the rendering workload by greatly reducing the image quality in the peripheral vision and focusing on where your eyes are actually watching. We will soon get our hands on this headset and find out firsthand how this technology works especially in the CS world. It seems that the free upgrade event for the Crystal model is still active. If you buy the headset using our Hip Games TV code, you not only get our discount, but you can add the special code FREEDMASS and you will automatically receive the $99 DMS headphones, at no additional cost. So you can now enhance your Crystal headset with this valuable addition while the supplies are lasting. Link is in the video description. And now, let's get back to our show. We should expect different states for the F4 cockpit. They can't share too much about it now, but it's definitely something they want. For example, having a more dirty one-off cockpit or a more clean one. This will tie in perfectly with their wear and tear system. The pilot customization will come after the early access launch. 
It's a system that pulls from other games. Skyrim was mentioned, but even older games where customizing your look was a nice touch, even if you never looked at the character in-game. According to Heatblur, Flight Sims kinda missed on this functionality. Moving on, it seems that they have experimented with AI to change Jester voice into female lines, and apparently it has worked quite well. Of course, using the raw files and not the radio compressed version. Now they mentioned these were just tests, and they cannot promise anything. But I say, let's make a poll and vote on it. Maybe that will change their mind. But let's be frank, it's not a big priority and we sure don't want to delay the module because of this. Oh, and by the way, the VSO's name is Jester. Wait, what? Yes, Petrovich, his name is also Jester. Why? I don't know, ask Hitler. But why Jester again? It's not even a real name. Like take, for example, me, Petrovich. Ah, come on. That wouldn't work. Okay, but then you got so many other great names like Billy, Jim, Jared, Tony. Why not Tony? Hey, buonasera. Ciao. Qualcuno ha chiamato Tony? No, Tony. Sorry. No. Petrovic, leave it. Ma che dici? Yes, but yes, why yes. again, Jester? Scusa, ma chi è questo Jester? You want Tony to take care? No, 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 Tony. It's all right. Hey, Petro, did he do something to you? To me? No. No, Tony. Oh. He didn't do nothing to nobody. You just say the word, Petro, okay? Okay, but no, no, no. Come on, Petrovic. Enough of this. So, back to Jester, one of the hardest things for Hitler was to make Jester interact with the radar, being a pure Doppler one in a fully analog jet. And then the question came out, does this mean that you really need a two-man crew to be able to properly operate this aircraft? Funny enough, it's less harder than the F-14, but the pilot has more control over things, even though you do need the Wizo, like for the radar-guided missiles using the radar, and you need him also for the ground attack that uses the radar functionality. This led the conversation to the targeting pod, and apparently it's a very unique experience from what we are used in DCS. This will be a very unlocked targeting system, and expect it to be very hard to keep the reticle on the target. But this is going to be a fun aspect of it, and it is controlled by the Wizzo and not the pilot. So it's like a video game in a game, or something like that. Moving on, there was no hope of news for the Eurofighter process. Not much, as they need to finish up the F4, so it's all hands on deck with the Phantom. The CEO did mention a bit the intruder, but again with not much to say, it's definitely at the end of the roadmap after the Phantom and the Eurofighter, but the AI version will make its way to DCS faster. In the meantime, the base and core technologies that are being worked on the F4 will go to the A6 intruder later. They don't have a clear picture yet on what exact version it will be, and in the end the data that is available will dictate on what they go for. They basically want to provide us with the most choice in regards of capabilities and weapons. And that was the interview with the CEO from Heatblur on the Air Combat Sim podcast. I link the entire video in the video description, make sure to check it out. This brings us to the end of our special show showcasing the F4E Phantom information, but stay tuned as our on-the-spot show continues later this week, with more DCS general news from Razbam, Avia Storm and ED themselves. Thank you for watching, many thanks to our patrons that support our channel, remember to check our sponsors, VR Rock for your VR bullet protection and prescription lenses, Fox Stream Managed Solutions for the best DCS servers out there, and Pimax for the most quality VR headsets that the market can offer. And subscribe to keep in touch with all the latest news on your favorite simulators and games. I am Andre Celesti, reminding you to fly safe, and I'll see you next time.